Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rain with Rock and Tar. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great week. This is going to be my monthly marginalia video. I always have a lot of fun with these. What are the different, you know, uh, short stories, essays, poems that I read across the past month that I didn't post any videos about, whole books, Viking sagas, uh, and then a couple of quick music recommendations at the end. So let's jump in and we'll start with some poetry and great poetry reading this month. Uh, Philip Sidney, um, Ben Johnson, Christopher Marlowe, uh, John Ford, and I highly recommend John Ford. Um, I'm probably going to read one of his plays, uh, Jacobian Tragic Comedies. It's, they're difficult to classify, um, in my reading at least. Uh, great, great poets though. And then in my little anthology of German po poetry, uh, working still with um, Hugo von Hofmannsthal and Novalis in here. And my daughters are enjoying much of what we're reading. Uh, within my Har portable Harlem Renaissance reader, found a great, great... We, I read... Uh, an essay by James Weldon Johnson that contrasted with an essay by W.E.B. Du Bois and showed sort of how Du Bois was a little bit more radical than um, Johnson. And both of them ultimately, like within the Harlem Renaissance, would be seen as too traditional. Um, but uh, I also read, of course, some of James Weldon Johnson's fantastic poetry and uh, including selections from God's Trombones where the, the poems are almost like versions of sermons set to, short sermons set to um, poetic meter. But this was one from Claude McKay, written in 1919 when there was this this horrible, like, uh, almost national, like, uh, sequence of racial violence against blacks. And he wrote uh, this, this poem, If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while around us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed. In vain, then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. What, though before us lies the open grave, like men will face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. Now, that almost feels like something like like a a, uh, a speech that was accidentally lost from Henry the Fourth Part One with Hotspur or something. It was just except you know so much more realistic because it was very much what McKay felt as as he saw the violence you know just coursing across Chicago, New York, um, Tulsa, famously, infamously. So great, great uh, sequence of poems. Still working with the Psalms in English, and I what I'm finding more and more is that. I'm enjoying a lot of the interesting, uh, you know, translations of Psalms, the different comparisons between Psalms. Um, this, this month I was with uh, Richard Crashaw, uh, Crashaw um, Henry Vaughn, really wonderful, John Donne, lots of great poets. I am finding though that the editor, Donald Davey, is somewhat intrusive and like weirdly judgmental. Uh, and so <laughs> great anthology, not necessarily great commentary. Um, and then in terms of short, short stories, so uh, still reading this fantastic collection, Randall Jarrell's Book of Stories, uh, this past month, I read He by Catherine Ann Porter, which was interesting. It felt like uh, uh, there were some elements of almost like the uh, Faulkner, like some, someone uh, looking at Benji Compson from Sound and the Fury, and almost uh, a story that could have been written from Mrs. Compson's perspective might be the way I would try to express it. And then also a story, Peasants, by Frank O'Connor, which was, was interesting. Um, it didn't feel spectacular. Uh, it didn't, didn't feel quite as memorable. Um, within the Penguin Book of Japanese Short Stories, I read Patriotism by Yukio Mishima because Codex Cantina was doing a video on that. And that left just such a horrible taste in my mouth that I went and read um, The Girl from Ipanema, uh, what is it, 1962, 1983, something like that, by uh, Haruki Murakami. And that was like weird and almost a, a little vignette, more than a story, but it was a weird, uh, fun little, you know, uh, way to totally divert my mind from Mishima. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has caught the French series Lupin uh, that has been airing, I believe it was on Netflix, but my wife and I were huge, huge fans. And so I dug out my copy, Arsene Lupin, Gentleman Thief by Maurice LeBlanc, and just read a couple of the stories that were mentioned in, uh, in that in those first five episodes, so The Queen's Necklace, um, Arsene Lupin in Prison, The Escape of Arsene Lupin. Uh, so just, you know, fun little stories, fun little stories. Nice uh, mysteries that aren't quite Sherlock Holmesian. Like they, they 
feel of a piece. You can tell there that uh, LeBlanc had read Conan Doyle, but he's writing a different story, and it works. It really does work. Uh, some other fun stories uh, from the best of Richard Matheson, who's a truly marvelous writer. Um, Witch War, <laughs> which was just it was like surrealism uh and and almost this like stream of consciousness it, it felt like someone take someone who had been raised reading the Bernstein bears where it's like bears in the night bears running it that's what it felt like with the narration of the group of like teenage girls who are going to use magic to wipe out you know a battalion um so that was a really interesting story and then the other one i read was um was, oh counterfeit bills which reminded me of a story I read by uh, Robert Sheckley last June, where you basically have like this idea of like uh, clones of the same person. The character's name is Bill. There are many Bills, so they're counterfeit Bills. And then uh, from Donald Bartlemy's uh, 60 Stories, read the first story that's in here, Margins. I wasn't impressed by it. And I've, I've read some Bartlemy before, and sometimes he can, I, I had never really been that interested. But the second story, uh, Shower of Gold is what I believe it's called, which I read this month. Yeah, A Shower of Gold. I liked that story a lot. So I, I am looking forward to reading more from Bartlemy. And I don't know if anybody else likes Bartlemy, but I'd be, I'd be interested to hear if you have any favorite stories that might be in 60 stories. Uh, moving forward, some other fun books. So uh, someone, I'm not sure who it was, but someone who was uh, talking in, in the Sagalong group had mentioned reading uh, the Saga of Gunlag Serpent Tongue a couple of years ago and saying, you know, praising it to, to the roof beams. And I said, okay. And I will echo that praise. It is marvelous. It might be, mm, Eagle Saga is, is great, but it might be my favorite of the shorter sagas so far that I've read in the sagas of the Icelanders. It is just, um, it is it is very focused. It, it, it's such a tight narrative. And what I would say is if you enjoy Beowulf or if you have, tried to read Beowulf and found that you don't enjoy it, which was me for a very long time. And I still don't really, I've finished it, but I'm not a, a fan. Um, but if, if you feel like Beowulf is, is, is weak, really try the saga of Gunlag Serpent Tongue. You might find that it, it, it achieves exactly what you want. Um, it certainly did for me. Uh, I, of course, was doing a couple of videos for Jonesing for Giannis with uh, fairy tale comparisons. So I was also just reading other uh, Brothers Grimm fairy tales, Rapunzel, uh, Three Snake Leaves was Three Snake Leaves is a really interesting one and one that I keep sort of thinking through in my brain. Um, let's see. So just some other work. I'm still I'm asymptotically approaching the end of reporting civil rights part one. Uh, I <laughs> bizarrely acquired for an absurdly low price um, a Hamilton, if you will. Uh, the double uh, edition of the like collected criticism and essays of Henry James and he has some interesting essays on like the science of criticism and just on different writers that I actually enjoyed and I, I don't really enjoy Henry James I always when I read Henry James I have to tell myself that I'm reading a writer named Henri Hamas to make me think that I'm not reading Henry James and I shouldn't be bored and I, I enjoyed the science of criticism particularly. He talks about how there's a, and this is even probably more true in 2021, um, and, and through the, the latter half of the 20th century, but there's an idea of this like um, criticism industrial complex where you have, you know, critics who are supposed to praise some of the books they read. And so they get these new books and they just, this is one of the greatest books ever written. And it's not. And then something comes along that is objectively better. Well, this is the greatest book that's ever written. And you end up with this boy who cried wolf syndrome. Um, and so it was interesting to find that even 140 years ago, that was an issue, according to James. Um, I also read one of his longer stories, The Siege of London, and I really enjoyed it. Legitimately enjoyed it. I, I am eager to try another story by Henri Hamas. Um, <laughs> and... Secretly, one of the reasons I think I liked The Siege of London is that the uh, a key character is a woman who has spent many years in the southwestern United States, including Arizona Territory and New Mexico Territory, uh, and has lived a rough life on the frontier, um, and now is trying to, you know, uh, make a successful marriage. Um, 
and while she still can there in uh, Paris and London. So that it, it, it worked. The psychology worked. It didn't feel um, a, a Rococo realism of just these boring quotidian details. So I, I recommend The Siege of London. I read uh, Arizona Dreams, which is a local Phoenix-based mystery by John Talton, who grew up here in Phoenix, uh, just a couple miles from my house, actually, and uh, no longer lives here, but was a reporter for a long time. And he writes a series of, of mysteries set in Phoenix. Um, Arizona Dreams. This one was interesting. This one, it, it was uh, kind of in the middle in terms of the, the mysteries I've read from him. I do recommend Concrete Desert, which is the first one. Not really a fan of the second and third ones. Um, this is the fourth one, and it, it was probably the second best of the ones I've read. I am doing a sort of multi-season <laughs> reading of uh, the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. As I do that, I then read the you know corresponding chapters in God of Biography by Jack Miles. And so this in January it was sort of you know the the Pentateuch, the the first five books, so Genesis, Exodus. Uh, numbers, uh, Leviticus numbers. I had just read Deuteronomy um, uh, fairly recently, so I didn't reread that. And so this month it will be Joshua and Judges. Very violent. And then to close out, of course, continue to read this masterpiece of world literature, the Shaname. Highly recommend this. I think if, yeah, this is over 900 pages. So if you're looking for a March of the Mammoths book that you want to just be fascinated and delighted by and to open up a world you know a true um alternate dimension of world literature that you didn't realize existed this is one of you know this could be on your list and um i was working through sort of the zal and then um rostam uh uh tales and and, and stories and i know a lot of people really like rostam they they're there's something incredible about him as a character uh, he, he's a, an empathetic Achilles. <laughs> he, he really works. He's such a fully captured, you know, like mythical demigod, like human with human emotions. Um, but I'll be honest, the, the stories about Zal and Zal, uh, you know, his birth and the birds and then, uh, getting married. I was a sucker for those. That, that might be the favorite, uh, passage so far from what I've read in the Shaname. And then, um, this is a biography I read. I read, actually read the entire book. I didn't do a discussion around it or anything. And it's really because it's just some background reading. Um, it's uh, Christopher Marlowe, Poet and Spy by Park Honan. And uh, Honan wrote multiple biographies. This is the first I've read of his biographies. I loved it. And I, I will undoubtedly read another of his biographies. I'm not sure if it will be the one on Shakespeare, if it'll be the one on Matthew Arnold. Um, because what worked about the biography is a there aren't very many facts about Marlowe, so it, it reminded me a little bit of poets in a landscape by gilbert hyatt which i read last june and in that it combines biography with literary criticism of the actual artist's works with this sense of trying to immerse the reader in the artist's world and honan captured that in an amazing way like there are there are whole sections of the biography where we're in a you know, school in Canterbury in the 16th century, or we're over, you know, at Cambridge in the 16th century, or we're across, you know, in uh, the Netherlands during a war. And you just feel this sense of immediacy. The, the entire biography feels very three-dimensional and lived in because we're in the world with trying to trace like the shadows of Christopher Marlowe. And then you couple that like just immersive sense of narrative with all of these, you know, really thoughtful, critical, um, you know, writings on the different plays and the poems. And I, I, <laughs> I was enthralled. I really took my time because I just kept realizing how, how much there was to learn from this book. Um, and it, it of course is, <laughs> it's a foundational piece of what will ultimately be, uh, my final 2021 Jones and Friannis video when I compare, um, Marlowe's Dr. Faustus with Faust Part 1 by Goethe. And I'm working on the fortunes of Faust right now. And as I, after I finish those, I think I'll be ready to, um, to actually reread the, re -read the two texts that I've read a couple of times. I'll reread those this year and then try to put together a nice comparison. So that was my, March, or my January reading.
And in terms of music, a couple of quick ones. Well, I was reading a lot of fairy tales, so A Trick of the Tale by Genesis, which I believe was from their first album after Peter Gabriel left. So you get some early Phil Collins vocals. Uh, another semi fairy tale type top song would be March of the Black Queen by the great glam rock, all sorts of fun pop rock band Queen from Queen 2. And then, uh, since you know, I read uh, Haruki Murakami's story about the girl from Ipanema, why not? The girl from Ipanema, sung by Oscar Gilberto, but uh, I believe from the actual Getz Gilberto, Stan Getz Jao Gilberto album, like the first collaboration they did. So, there you go. Thanks, everybody.